Welcome to the Sailing Into Oblivion podcast. I'm your host, Jerome Rand. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Tonight, we've got the second of the podcasts that I recorded out at sea. And this one is, it was kind of a little hard to actually listen to um, because it's actually pre- pre sort of gale force conditions just as the winds are starting to kick and uh i'm sort of sitting there kind of hopeful and a little nervous and ready for action but uh definitely not knowing what what just lies uh only only 12 hours or so ahead of me and uh i don't know it's kind of weird that's messing with my head quite a bit uh right now and i i this one's going to be kind of short um, because the next the next one that I recorded out at sea was sort of the tail of the the whole storm, as far as I could tell what what happened uh, in the sort of state of mind that I was in. And that one's long. That one's like a, a, an hour or so. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm still, to be honest, I'm still sort of. Uh, dealing with a little bit of mental issues and stuff like that with, uh, as far as with everything, but, uh, I am trying to, trying to, uh, you know, deal with it. I reached out to my buddy Rob and he's got a lot to, a lot of experience with, uh, PS, PTSD and, and stuff like that. And, uh, he's given me a bit of guidance as far as what to look for and, telltale signs and things like that to sort of know if uh, that is something I might be having to deal with or if I'm doing okay. And as far as he thinks, uh, seem to be doing okay at this point, which is good. Um, you know, I know when I try and retell a story, sometimes <clears throat> certain sections of it definitely uh, get to me to the point where I sort of have to pause and can't continue telling the story, but, um, you know, that's to be expected, I think, in some ways. There were some odd coincidences uh, that happened that night that uh, they just somehow just get to you, or at least they get to me, uh, but <clears throat> don't want to get into that right now. We're just going to, we're just going to dive into this, uh, this little, little snippet. Um, you know, it's about 20 minutes long or so, but I'm, I'm prepping out and trying to get ready and, and do whatever I can to to sort of weather the coming gale and <clears throat> a gale it definitely indeed was the the forecast was for you know 30 knots or so sustained winds and uh, it definitely was a little bit windier than that but uh, not much I mean it you know that was kind of the funny thing about this whole situation was uh, it just it was really a fine example of wind against current and Gulf Stream eddies and all that stuff that I've always been warned about and I've always heeded that warning and just found myself sort of stuck in that position but um yeah I don't know it's it's kind of crazy um as far as Sparrow goes we're we're getting there I have to do a big shout out to Mike uh he I got in contact with him. He's part of the West Sale West Sale uh, family, a big wig, let's say, in that family, and uh, <clears throat> kind of a go-to guy. And he's the the West Sale family as a whole has has uh, sort of done a great job, um, unbeknownst to me, sort of uh, really just trying to pull some support together and collect the parts and get Sparrow back to fighting shape, um, which is just poof i can't even tell you how that's awesome <laughs> just really awesome i can't you know it's it's hard to describe when you, when you get that sort of support from from people and it really does uh it just warms my heart uh because you know sparrow deserves all the love she can get <sighs> took care of me so mm. boy it's just crazy there's one thing that's happened. It's just like trying to relay some of the stuff. When I start thinking about it, it, just brings me right to the verge. And I am not a crier. <laughs> Although I've been known to, I suppose. So 
Who knows? Who knows? But in any event, um, yeah, so Sparrow's coming along. We're getting all cleaned up. Uh, I'm still finding pieces of eggshell everywhere and all that sort of stuff. But uh, slowly but surely, every cupboard, every, everything is getting inspected and looked at. Um, definitely have some issues with the bulkheads and the fiberglass that was attaching the bulkheads to the hull has uh, come out. So we definitely took a, a pretty big, pretty big hit, but we will, we will see. And uh, yeah, like I said, huge amount of support from a lot of people. Um, you all know who you are. I'd, I'd name all your names, but there's too many to name in this little intro. And uh, so uh, we'll, we'll get some more information. I'm going to, I'm going to sit down with, uh, there's a few people that I'm going to be sitting down with over the next couple of days to, to sort of get away from my story for a little bit and, and get into some others. Uh, my buddy, Dan, who's a sort of just starting out solo sailor. And then another, uh, thing that I want to do is sit down with Pax, who's been on the show before and have him actually turn the tables on me. And he's going to sort of interview me a little bit about what happened. And I don't know, I think that'll be a good way, uh, to sort of explain the whole, the whole situation and uh, the whole trip uh, without me just droning on about it, uh, actually sort of focusing on some of the questions that, that, you know, everybody might want to know about. So on that note, I do want to say that uh, I have scheduled on my YouTube channel for Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern time to do a live stream question and answer, you know, talk about the trip. Uh, it's going to be live and people can type in their questions and all that sort of stuff, comments, anything they want. And uh, I'll try and get to it and we'll just, I'm just going to keep it rolling. So as long as people are still there, I will, uh, I'll keep rolling with it. I've got good internet here, uh, at the Marina. And so it should be, should be pretty, um, glitch free unlike when i was up in the the boatyard and stuff so you can just tune into youtube sailing into oblivion channel um can't miss it and anybody you don't have to be a subscriber or anything like that so so look forward to that so thursday 8 p.m on youtube um and yeah other than that you know as i always say if you want to support the show you can head over to patreon uh there will be a link in the description and big shout out, obviously, to my Patreon family, because uh, without you guys, one, I wouldn't have ever been able to get out there, which I'm not holding it against anybody. <laughs> no, I am still uh, I am still leaning towards that. I am glad that I was able to go out and, and deal with this experience, because uh, I think no matter how good or bad an experience is, I think it's something that can be learned from, and uh, that's what life is all about. So uh, thank you to all the Patreon family for making that possible and also making my return to land possible, uh, being able to return to a dock instead of uh, going and having to anchor out and stuff. You know, I had to refuel the boat today and all that sort of that sort of rigmarole and obviously you got to pay doc fees and everything like that. And, uh, a big part of that comes from the support from this show, uh, to this show. And that's, that's, that's absolutely huge. So pat on the back, uh, for all the Patreon family, all 34 of you guys and gals. It is fantastic. Um, other than that, I did put out a new line of shirts. <laughs> uh, they've got a great picture from from the trip of uh, Sparrow heeled way over and a big old breaking wave in the foreground. And it uh, gives the date and uh, of the knockdown and everything. And, um, you know, those those are sort of uh, in hopes of helping Sparrow get back to her uh, fighting shape. So. If, uh, if you like the shirts, just check them out there. There, uh, I'll be, there'll be a link in the description, but they're on the bottom of the, any of the videos on YouTube. So those are the only plugs I want to do for now. Uh, big thanks to every listener out there who's, uh, shown support and written in and, uh, all the comments and stuff, because it's, it's heartwarming to be able to come back and, uh, just see people who are excited that I'm back and, you know, not mad at me for failing to do another trip, uh, in full completion because, uh, Hey, you know, I'm not really looking to finish things. I'm just looking for a bit of adventure. And uh, I found it this time, big time. So without further ado, here is the uh, the pre-storm uh, podcast from Out at Sea. So here we go.
Oh, we are live. Hopefully there's not too much wind noise. Uh, I don't think there should be. Well, we are in the in the pregame thick of it <laughs> at this point. Uh, just the left way. I saw I'm at 37 degrees, 50. Eight minutes north and uh, 64 degrees, 14 minutes west. Uh, that puts me about halfway in between, I think, Cape Cod and... Oh, jeez. That's a squeaker. Uh, it's going to be a little hard. There might be some extra noises here. That's just uh, going to have to be how it is. But, yeah, it's... it's uh, Fixing to blow out there tonight, and I'm as ready as I can be. And uh, yeah, right now, right now the winds came up about an hour ago. The forecast to really get into the gale force uh, range, 30, 32, 33. Uh, I think around like 5, 6 a.m. But the way the weather has been acting. Uh, so far, since I've been out here, I kind of figured I'd err on the side of caution. I don't know how many times already that we've essentially gone and uh, gone from zero to 30 knots of breeze. I guess three three times so far. Ugh, I'm a little tired. Uh, Although I, I got some good sleep today. Uh, that's uh, one of the top tips from old John Kretschmer. Get uh, get that sleep in. It's very important. Oh, squeaky chair. Man, that's a bummer. There's got to be a way to stop that. Hold on. Let me pause this for a sec. Hey, hey. There we go. That's better. Oh, yeah. I'm turning my little submarine red light on. Yeah, top tips for sure is try and get some sleep before you have to weather uh, some some pretty bad weather. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, and it's it's a little tricky. You'd think, you know, how am I going to do that? I'm nervous, and I am too right now for sure. But it's one of those things where usually solo sailing, especially, you're already kind of tired pretty much all the time. So you could just you could hit your bunk and fall asleep. Uh, I think the only time I've ever not been able to do that was sailing from the tip of Brazil back towards the Caribbean because literally didn't do anything for uh, 12 days as far as dealing with the sails and stuff. So, you know, it was sort of thing like I would sleep all the time. Um, and I'd lay there and be like, yeah, it's just hot. I don't have any more books or I had to savor the last books that I had uh, but yeah so um, I guess for this situation uh, part of what what's making me a little nervous is our proximity to the Gulf Stream we just crossed the mainstream portion of it today um, cut it really close I thought for sure it was gonna be a piece of cake to get across have a hundred miles uh, under our keel before we got into anything. And I thought if the prevailing winds, if everything would have been kind of a little bit, uh, how should I say, in our favor, we probably would have made it just about south of this thing anyway. But we did not. We had some, uh, some super light winds, some becalm sections, uh, and just wasn't happening there's just a point i mean uh, today crossing the stream the winds just were they were not the same steady for more than 10 minutes at any time so it just made it real challenging as far as you know you, you've just got to pay attention to it the whole time you can't do other things um you know it's constant adjustment of the wind vane and then adjusting the sails and then the sails are slogging like i had the perfect murphy's law example that i've never i mean it was so perfect it was it was almost funny i laughed out loud um super frustrated 
bunch of different sail changes trying to trying to just get enough wind to just keep sailing across the stream and ended up finding a combination that worked like drifter and the mainsail and we were able to sort of handle the the puffs and uh and sort of cut our way through the calm patches and then we get to a point where it's like 20 minutes of just flat nothing calm and finally i'm like dude i i've got to get out of this gulf stream i you know this is stupid let's do this and so i go down to fire up the engine which involves dousing the drifter and doing a whole bunch of other stuff uh get the engine fired up which is you know I don't use the engine very often in this boat, and so I sort of like shut it down, shut it down. So fuel, fuel lines are off, water's off, um, you know, exhaust is, is the seacock for that is closed. I don't know, there's just a lot. So, and this, I, this boat has the worst companionway staircase uh, of, I think, almost any boat in history. It's so bad. It's definitely got to go. But in any event, um, we uh to go through all this stuff i'm sweating it's hot that's one benefit right now is that it's very warm out um not so much now but it was earlier when we were right in the thick of that water but uh so i get it going and put her in gear and we start motoring and not even two minutes not even not even it just the wind just kicks right on and it kicks on uh, to a point where I can't even put the drifter back up. I have to switch now to the staysail. So I let the engine run, batteries charging, all that sort of stuff. And I'm just thinking to myself, holy cow, had I waited two more minutes, uh, I would have actually been in a little bit of a pickle because we had so much wind, it would have been hard to deal with with the drifter, but could have dealt with it. Uh, would much rather have not had to fire up the engine. I don't know. It was just, it was just comical. You know, it's the same, still get those same things every once in a while in this boat where if it's really light wind conditions and the mainsail is just every once in a while pounding or slatting, um, uh, you know, if I'm up there on deck in the cockpit, it'll stop. And everything's all good. And I don't know, maybe it's a weight displacement thing. I doubt it. I think it's more of a uh, Murphy's Law. But the minute you go down below and try and get in your bunk, boom, it starts sliding again. <laughs> You're just like, why? Oh, I hate you. And then you go up there and it stops. And then you go back down and it starts. And it's just uh, kind of ridiculous, to tell you the truth, sometimes. But you just go with it. That's part of uh, part of the whole offshore experience. Testing your psyche against annoyance and frustration since 1896 when Joshua Slocum set sail by himself. Mm hmm Oh, man, I'd love to be having a beer right now. That is for sure. Boy. Just not a uh, not a smart thing to do at this point. I need my wits about me for the coming uh, coming weather. And although it may help to maybe put me down for an hour or so, ain't worth it. Yeah, we got a long time out here. I got a lot of bush lights. I wanna. Oh, I just heard a lot of stuff shifting. Hmm. Yeah. So right now we are. I have the triple reefed mainsail. We just, I just woke up from this little nap and the wind has come on. So I'm sort of like, okay. So it's probably blowing 15 out, something like that. Nothing crazy, but it's hard on the nose. And, uh, we sort of, my, my game plan. Well, geez, my brain's not working. It is, uh, just, just in my own defense. It's one 30 in the morning out here uh, <laughs> on day. I think day six or seven. So in any event, got the triple reef mainsail up and I've got the storm jib, the small storm jib up forward. We're plugging away at about three and a half knots or so, depending on uh, the size of the wave we, we plunk into. Everything's pretty small. Everything's very reasonable, calm, cool, collective right now. But as I've seen so far on this trip, the, uh, 
the middle ground is like not there. It's either full on or not much at all. And uh, that's okay as long as it stays consistent, I guess. But so the game plan as these wind as these winds pick up right now, the winds out of the southeast, maybe or sorry, the southwest. And uh, so we're beating hard into that. And I think the game plan is the first half of this thing is going to be wins from there. And then the second half are wins from the uh, west northwest. And those I can run with. Uh, or actually sort of utilize some more. I have to be careful because there's an eddy of the Gulf Stream. Uh, to the east to the southeast of my position now and uh, I don't want to wander into that one because that's a circular one that you get on the back side of it it's actually uh, you could almost get the current against the wind and so I'm very cognizant of that that's when that's when things get real deal crazy with the waves so um, the game plan may be and we're gonna see it's got to stay flexible is to possibly hove to as uh, as these winds get a little bit more intense and I start pounding through the seas. And uh, depending on where we are there, because the proximity of all this stuff is like 60, 90 miles away, um, but you can eat up that those miles, especially it seems like if you don't want to go in that direction, you'll eat up those miles really fast. I don't know why that is, but in any event... Uh, we uh, we're just gonna monitor that, and then when the wind shifts sometime tomorrow and comes out of the northwest, then we'll go ahead and probably, um, depending on how strong it is, we'll just see. Um, I'm hoping that it'll be something where it's manageable to the point where we can sort of take off and kind of broad reach our way through the rest of it with either just the mainsail or the main and the staysail. I mean, we've been booming. It's been pretty impressive to see Sparrow sort of uh, deal with this stuff under the storm sails and all that, but I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see how this one goes because every single one of these things is different. The one we went through the other night was... Uh, Wow, uh, it just was intense. Definitely gale force for a couple of the hours, and we were ripping it. We were just trying the. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Uh, why the the waves didn't seem to be breaking at that point? I'm. Just, I can only assume it had to do with the currents, but we were just a little further than beam to the sea, so the shallow broad reach, if you will, and flying along holy cow um the prop was freewheeling so so insanely hard i put the pipe wrench on it uh today because i was like uh -uh, i'm not listening to that again uh it's this old velvet drive transmission so you can't stop it uh with putting it in reverse and all that sort of stuff i know some engines you're not supposed to do that and some you can but uh, when you put it in mine, it does absolutely nothing. <laughs> Freewheeling. I've always wanted to figure out a better system to, to do that because it's a real pain to put that pipe wrench on. But luckily, the nice part is I so rarely have to use the engine, especially now that I'm getting further south and the sun is coming out. As soon as, as, soon as I can power that fridge 100% and with, with uh, the solar panels, then the engine, you know, I'll... I'll shut it down for a long time, spray some WD-40 on the whole thing and just be like, yep, take a break. We're good. I'm going to, because I'll, I'll just, I'd rather drift than just motor. There's no reason to motor. You have to have a uh, time, a time uh, crunch or something like that to have to motor, I think. But in any event, yeah, it's the game plan. So uh, according to the forecast, so it's like 1.30 now, I'm going to try and get some sleep. According to the forecast, we've, We've got until about three in the morning uh, or so until the winds uh, creep up above 20. And then by about 5 a.m., that's when they're in the 27, 29 range. Um, 
I don't know. It's been interesting using this new weather program. And I, I know right now uh, with the Gulf Stream and with the, the heavy weather and all that sort of stuff, it's been pretty crucial and critical to look at it a lot. Normally, I don't do that. Um, you sort of get your idea of what the heck's going on, close the laptop, and uh, you put it away. But now with this Iridium Go and all that sort of stuff, we've got... Uh, Essentially, we have the information on a, on a tablet, and so it's very readily available. And it's kind of like, oh, well, let me just check. Let's see exactly where I am. And, you know, before when it was on the computer, you have to open up the Pelican case and then pull the thing out, make sure it's charged. Da, da, da. I mean, I'm pretty much just using this computer for uh, podcasts for this voyage, which is awesome. Because podcasts are the best. <laughs> oh, man. I wish I could do one while we're in this uh, in this weather, but I have a feeling it's going to be a little too bouncy, a little too uh, rocky, and uh, a little too dangerous for the old computer. But uh, that's about it. I'm really psyched, though. Uh, as soon as... Oh, God, sorry. Uh, as soon as this next day uh, as soon as these winds finally ease up they're gonna ease up for a good little chunk i'll be able to get a little further south and start working my way east and hopefully have enough uh have enough sort of sea room and time to stay in good position with with all these systems coming off uh, the east coast so far it's just been like you just gotta take your bait you take your beatings take your licks till you get down there far enough south where you can sort of toy in between the bottom of the lows and then the easterly trade winds um you know that sort of belt it's tricky Sometimes it's not the best, uh, but being that all I really want to do is have some good sailing, you know, for days and weeks on end, then that's sort of the priority, really. So that's what I'm going to try and do. I mean, you know, you're always going to see a little bit of bad weather, but it's not it's not the vast majority of the time, as long as you stay down here. Um, you know, had I tried to cross, uh, the great circle route and go up underneath Greenland, then yeah, probably be pretty ugly up there right now. Uh, probably be a hellscape of 40 foot breaking waves, snow, uh, 80 knot winds. Uh, doesn't sound fun to me at all. Sounds it, it piques my curiosity, and it definitely used to. Uh, but I don't know. In my old age, now with my the experiences I've had, I don't know. I kind of like it. It's uh, kind of like skydiving. You do it once. You roll that dice. You gamble it. It's awesome. Holy smokes! Unbelievable. And I'm never doing that again. <laughs> oh man. So anyway, that's it for this evening. I'm sure we'll touch base again let you know how all this sort of stuff uh sort of stuff goes and uh, hopefully it'll all be good we're batting down everything you know obviously top side is all you know uh as secure as possible the deck is pretty much all clear the only thing that may need to happen depending on how heavy the winds get is uh just collapse the dodger but that's unhooking one thing and then lashing it Everything else is, uh, there's nothing else. There's just nothing else out there. Um, that's one of the beauties of a boat like this is as long as you keep it super crazy simple. I mean, that solar panel and stuff, the second one, it's all lashed underneath. And uh, that's all hooked up to the gallows, big like inch and a half stainless. You could do pull-ups off of it, no problem. Uh so it's all pretty bulletproof, but I think the biggest thing is that there's no, there's not a bunch of other stuff up there. You know, when the, when the waves start breaking and, and lots of water's coming over the deck, that's when all of a sudden this comes unhooked, that comes unhooked. So keep it flush, keep it clear, 
And uh, then, you know, just try and protect the boat. Try and take it as easy on the boat as possible. Don't push it real hard unless you have to. Um, and then, yeah, down below, I mean, shoot, now after being through three little bouts of, of pretty heavy, you know, close to gale uh, conditions, uh, I found all the drawers that are going to open and uh, all the things that have shifted and, and all that sort of stuff. I, I must say I'm pretty amazed that that water bladder that's under my bunk, it's like a 50-gallon one. I probably got 35 in it or something, um, but it's like for camping or I, I don't even know. It's definitely not for being on a constantly undulating boat. But I'm sure it's lost a couple of gallons, um, but it hasn't exploded yet. <laughs> so we'll see if we make it through this one. Um, but one of my rewards for, uh, for continuing to punch through as if I have a choice is uh, uh, as soon as I can, I'm going to take a shower. Nice little half gallon. I might even treat myself to a gallon. Oh man, pour it on my head and all over my body. Oh, haircut, clip the nails, all that stuff. Like I haven't been able to do anything. <laughs> all right, that's it. I got to get some sleep. Uh, reporting live from Storm Tracker, Mighty Sparrow. Thanks for listening.